Good morning. Greetings to you on this resurrection morning. And it really is a beautiful morning. We've got some clouds in the background and we'll see if the sun is going to break through uh, during the time we are here. We are at Milburn Farm in Southern Fauquier County. And this is the third year we have recorded our sunrise service from this location. And it is a beautiful location with the farm in the background, the sunrise, and we so appreciate uh, the Ashley family allowing us to use this facility, this location. Uh, Daryl has always been very gracious about uh, allowing us to do our sunrise service from uh, this particular spot. Although he did say that uh, he was going to call the game warden and tell him two men were turkey hunting uh, over here before daylight. But that's okay because by the time they get here, we'll have our gobbler and gone. So we, uh, but we are glad to be here and glad to come into your home and into your heart and share a word with you, a word of encouragement, a word of excitement, a word of comfort on this resurrection morning. And when I think about the events of that day, obviously uh, the focus is on the sunrise. That's why we're doing this service. And the events of that day obviously began very early in the morning when the two Marys, first of all, went to the tomb and found the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. They went back to report that to uh, Peter and John and they came and they saw the same thing. The angel sitting there saying, why are you here? Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. And that's the message today. That's the excitement uh, that we share. He is risen. He is alive. And we pray that you know that he is alive in your heart. But I also think about the events that took place the rest of that day. As a matter of fact, leading up to uh, that time from Palm Sunday into Resurrection Sunday. And then when the, as the day went on, uh, you had to know that the word began to get around uh, about the empty tomb, about the risen Lord. And one of my favorite stories about the Resurrection Day uh, took place really toward the evening when the scripture says in Luke 24 there were two that walked on the road to Emmaus and by this time it had to have been late in the afternoon it was seven or eight miles uh, from Jerusalem to Emmaus so it obviously would have taken them a couple of hours to cover that distance and it was late when they arrived at their home. But as they walked along, and I don't know if walk is really the right word, but as they moved along toward their home, you can be assured that they really were not moving very fast. Uh, these were two people who were very discouraged, very depressed, and very despondent. And uh, they walked along, and if you could just see the picture of uh, their shoulders were slumped and their heads were bowed, and they really were not taking very big steps, just shuffling their feet along, just the way that people who are discouraged really do. And even as they walked, uh, someone appeared in their midst from right out of nowhere all of a sudden they've got a third party joining them and they're talking about the events of the day and uh, that's not really good news what has happened the only thing they know is there's an empty tomb and the one that they thought was going to be their savior and i'm talking about a savior more from a political standpoint than a spiritual standpoint He's not there anymore, and 
he didn't do what they thought he would do in uh, saving them from Roman oppression. But nonetheless, as they walked along, the Lord listened to them. And make no mistake about it, whatever's going on in your life right now, whatever conversation you're having about the difficulties that you're facing, the Lord's very much aware of it. He hears every word. And at some point, the Lord broke in the conversation and said, what is this you all are talking about? What, uh, what events uh, are you uh, covering? And almost with amazement and astonishment and probably a touch of sarcasm, they just ask him, are you a stranger in town? Have you not been around here? Do you not know what's going on? Well, the answer to that question, are you a stranger in town, was emphatically yes. This world was not Jesus Christ's home. Never was and never will be. Uh, he came from his heavenly home to walk this earth and to walk among men and to do what he came to do, and that was to be the Savior of the world. And so, yes, he was a stranger. But they walked along and they talked along, and, and then he led them in a beautiful Bible survey course. He went back to Moses and covered the scriptures, and I'm sure that if they weren't walking slowly before, they are now, because they are enjoying the Bible study. They are enjoying the teachings of the Lord. While they do not know at this point who he is, no matter, they are still just glad to have anybody share their company, and probably more specifically, to share their misery. But he, they walked and they talked and on they went. And late in the evening, it's probably getting toward darkness. They arrive at their home and the scripture says that Jesus made as though he would have gone on. And he would have. And there's a valuable lesson in that. And that lesson is when Jesus Christ knocks at your door the door of your heart. He will not force his way in. You have to invite him in. They invited him into their home, and he came in and spent time with them. But the scripture says he made as though he would have gone on. And so this morning, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, he's there at your heart's door. He wants to come in. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Jesus is pleading. But he created you a free moral agent, and he's not going to violate your free will. You have to invite him to come in. They did that, and they, Scripture says that they broke bread together. During the course of that meal, they recognized the Lord, and we have to believe that what they really recognized was the nail prints in his hand as he broke bread with them. And so, just as quickly as he appeared, he disappeared. And they are left to ponder between the two of them. Who is this man? Who was it? Where did he come from? Where did he go? And the scripture does say that the one, man, one person was Cleopas, and we just assume the other was his wife. But no matter, they made this statement, and I want to share it with you. It's in verse 32. They said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? Did not our heart burn within us? Listen, if you want to have heartburn, this is the kind you want to get. Because the fellowship of our Lord Jesus Christ will warm your heart like nothing else in this world will ever do. But they made this statement, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us in the way, while he walked with us, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And so this morning, on this resurrection day, I want to encourage you to invite the Lord into your heart, into your life. And 
whether or not the sun will break through the clouds, and it will, it is only a matter of time before the cloud cover will disappear. The sun will be shining brightly. The Lord will shine through the storm clouds of your life, and uh, you will just put those things as a distant memory. How excited were these two people with what they had heard? Well, let me tell you. We've already said that as far as we know, they were seven or eight miles from Jerusalem. And I'm sure that when they left that town, walking on the road to Emmaus, they looked back and they just thought, we can't put that city out of our mind and out of our memory and out of our vision soon enough. We're just glad to be done, to be rid of this, and to find some measure of comfort in our home. Little did they realize when they arrived at their house that all of the events that had taken place soon now had become a distant memory. Human nature being what it is, we probably would have said, you know what, it's getting late, it's getting dark, so why don't we just get a good night's rest and first thing in the morning, we'll go back into Jerusalem and tell the people what have happened to us. That wasn't the way it came about. The scripture says they went back that night. They covered that seven or eight miles back to Jerusalem. When they arrived there, they went to the upper room where the disciples and others were gathered. And... I'm sure they probably had difficulty getting their story across, but believe me, they got their story across, and they told those people exactly what had happened about the man, the stranger, joining them on the road to Emmaus, and then coming into their home and breaking bread with them, and then disappearing just as quickly as he appeared on the road to Emmaus. I want to tell you, when you invite Jesus Christ into your heart, you've got a story to tell to the nations. We sing that song. We have a story to tell to the nations. And it's one that will cause you to be excited. It's a story that will not come about any other way from any other source. It has to be based on a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so, wherever you are today, you're going to face some kind of difficulty in your life at some point, sometime or another, something's going to happen. And you may not have a lot of energy. You might not have the enthusiasm in your conversation. You may be walking, shuffling your feet with your shoulders slumped and your head bowed down. And if you will do that, if that's happening in your life today, I want to tell you, invite the Lord into your heart. Invite him into your home. He'll come in. You'll have fellowship together. And I can assure you, it will be like no other experience you've ever had. My favorite song is On the Road to Emmaus. And it just talks about these two who walked on that road and the one thing that stands out about it is the Bible lesson they had as they walked. The survey, Bible survey course that Jesus led them, starting from Moses and the prophets, right on through, and really just saying to them, O oh, slow and foolish of heart, should not these things have happened? And so the Lord really let them know that what took place wasn't the end it was only the beginning and if you'll invite christ into your heart you'll find out that life has never been as good and has never been as great as it is from this moment forward i pray that you'll do that this morning let the sunshine of god's love come through the storm clouds of your life if there are storm clouds whatever it may be let the sunshine of christ's love come into your heart and you'll have the same excitement that the two had 
as they walked on the road to Emmaus, and more specifically, the excitement they had as they turned around and went back to Jerusalem and told the story of the Savior who came into their heart and came into their home, and life for them was never the same because they had a story that forever they could tell. And you can have your own story. You can write your own chapter because the Lord is waiting and he's willing. Father, today, on this resurrection day, we pray that anyone who's never trusted Christ as their Savior will do that even in this hour. What a glorious resurrection day this would be if anyone would open their heart and receive Christ because it would change the meaning of Easter Sunday. It would change the meaning of the resurrection day. Thank you, our Father, today. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you for everything, most of all, for victory in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.